DJ Ben Ben Bandana. Hey, yo, it's DJ Bandana Black, Mr. Well Connected, even more respected. Power 93.7 WBLK, Power 102 Jams, Fleet DJs, Armadillo Vodka, and a bunch of other worldwide stuff. Shouts out to the Bandana fam, too. And today we got a special guest, a super special guest, uh, on the line with us today. We're going to chop it up. He got some big things going on um, in the music industry, a lot of songs heating up out there in the streets and all that, too. But we're going to chop it up with him. I'm going I'm to let you introduce yourself. Let him know your name. Yeah, right. Really- no, Jug the Illis all day. Definitely. So we got Jug the Illis on the line. Uh, I want to start off with, how, how did you get the name Jug the Illis? I started off by pretty much, uh, I was always into Marvel characters, and Juggernaut used to always be like my, one of my favorite. And then uh, when I started uh, being introduced into the music industry and uh, just trying to learn how to make some music, uh, you know, people used to always call me Juggernaut because I'm six, you know, I'm like six, six, 300 something pounds. So I've always been, had that type and I was just, it always stuck with me. So, you know, I seen somebody else had that name in the industry. So I just, you know, pretty much just made it short, turned it to Juggy. And then, you know, from there, it just turned into Jug the Ellis. And, you know, the Ellis pretty much stands for just, you know, having the confidence within yourself and knowing that you're the best for yourself. Okay, definitely dope, dope. That's dope. Where are you, um, where are you from? I'm from North Philly. North. Raised in, I was born in Shot Town, raised in North Philly. Okay, North Philly. I got to come visit Philly, too. I finally had one of y'all uh, cheesesteaks. It's everything they said it was going to be, too. <laughs> <laughs> where, where I, I actually was out there in Buffalo, uh, well, like two days ago. Oh, for real? Yeah. Oh, dope. What you was doing in uh, Buffalo? You got family out here, son? No, nah, no, nah, I'm a uh, I'm a truck driver, so you know I, I constantly be over the road and all that. So you know, from Monday to Friday, I'll be I'll be you know driving, doing what I do. You feel me? So okay, that's dope, dude. That's dope as an artist too to be able to like check out different cities and stuff like this. That's like the perfect job for artists, honestly. Yeah, true. I mean, it, it, it's cool because it has its benefits. You know, I get to travel, meet a couple people, and all that stuff. And then you know, on top of that, you know, I get to make my music. You know. I could drop off my mixtapes or somewhere, you know what I'm saying? Like every location that I go to. So oh. it, it has its benefits. Okay, dope, dope. And what 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 um what made you get started in music? Like how long have you been doing music? What made you get started in actually doing music? Uh pretty much uh I was doing it for like about I would say about ten years now. Um pretty much what happened was that I had a uh my the mother of my child and uh, she had a cousin that was doing beats. So when he was doing beats, I was like pretty much into the arts and graffiti. And I had my own clothing company at the time. So I wasn't really worrying about it. But I seen that he had so much talent. His name was Solidified. And I was like, man, what you doing with your beats? He was like, oh, I ain't really doing that. You know, artists don't want to rap on that. I was like, what? And I was just like, yo, I'm going to just start rapping just to get you heard. And you know I'm saying and he was like, all right, bet. And I was like, cool. So I pretty much just started rapping on it. And the first time I went to the studio to rap on one of his beats, he was like, he was like, yo, like, yo, you fire, bro. Your flow is like crazy. I think, I think you should start doing this more often. And you know what I mean? I just, I brushed it off for a little bit. And I was like, ah, then it just stuck with me. You know, I, <laughs> I started to release a lot of my attentions and my attentions and all that stuff. And, you know, and it just started feeling good. Okay, that's dope. That's dope. Um, so like you said, you from uh from North North Philly is the part where like uh Seagull and them is from, right? Or is that South Philly? Yeah, they from they from like South, more like West Philly. I'm 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 more in the North Philly area, like uh you know Badlands, they call it. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you are talking about it. definitely, definitely. I be up on a lot of um like a lot of like like Philly artists and just a lot of stuff that's going on in Philly, especially through like YouTube and all that. Um, too, I definitely got to visit there. Um, how was it growing up where you was there, like, in, in in Philly? Like, was it, like, tell us a little bit it, about your, your upbringing. It was, I mean, I wasn't, like, you know, I used to be down, like, towards, uh, towards Fifth and Hunter Park, you know what I'm saying? But that was more, like, in a bad area. But my mom, she actually just, she got up on some money or whatever. She moved us to more of a nicer na- area, which was, like, Junietta. Oh, okay. Which now, you know, it's pretty much, like, uh, it's pretty much hood as hell now, but... You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, you know, uh, it was it was all right. You know, it, it was I dealt with a lot of uh, racial uh, times. You know what I mean? Because the area when we moved in, it was pretty much like all white at the at the time. And you know what I mean, you know, it was a lot of shootings, and it was you know just like any other hood. Oh. Okay. And um, you know, it was it was it was all right for the time being. But after a while, after the years, you know, going by, it started getting really bad. So. 
pretty much the same story of like every ghetto and every uh you know every person that been into that situation and circumstance okay cool so back on the, the, the music side of things um how many pro- do you have other projects uh, out besides like the music that you uh, recently sent me do you have like other projects you put out or just like uh, your, your first major joint uh yeah i actually got a project out it's called god set and um i pretty much did that album like two three years ago um you know i was creating a buzz doing what i was doing and um Pretty much, that's the only project I actually... Well, I actually got two projects. One, I, I'm a little bit ashamed of it, but, you know, that was when I first started. It was called Reporting for Badlands. That was the first one ever I ever did. And then the second one was called God Sent, you know, and that, John, I'm, I'm happy with that. But, uh, yeah, those are the only two projects I have. You know, I have other projects in store yeah. that I want to do, but at the moment, you know, dealing that a lot of people aren't receiving albums, and, you know, it's like, you could just bring an album today and then that joint is gone tomorrow. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> everything is so processed, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I'm just pretty much right now just dealing with singles, but I have a lot of content in my archives, you know what I'm saying, that I can drop an album if I want to. Okay, that's def- that's definitely smart, and I tell a lot of artists that too. Like especially like in 2018, like with the, with, the, with these days like that, everything with being like streaming and digital and all that too. Like unless you are like doing like a lot of streams and you get a lot of traction, it's really kind of pointless to put out like a a full project or a full album unless it makes sense because you kind of wasting music as opposed to you know what I'm saying just kind of working the singles and then once the singles is kind of catching on, then you hit them with some more music uh, as far as like a full project or even just more singles. Like the the game is totally different now than what it was. 10 years ago and I can see that you caught on early and you know what I'm saying you're doing it, doing it the right way to working with how things are going these days right right yeah cause you know you, you do the album and then it's like nobody really knows who you are you have no buzz no, there's no there's no streams coming in so it's like it's gonna fall on deaf ears now yeah. if somebody if you, if you have a little single and you you know you start practicing on your hits and, and you know you get a little trend going they're like oh man you know you could the money you make off of an album you can make off of one single so it, it just makes it smarter that route and then once you create your ba- fan base all you really need is just a thousand loyal fans man you, once you get that thousand loyal fans you you know you pretty much you you win the money man and then yeah. you know every merchandise and everything you just start to build and every money every revenue that you re- you receive from your music you know you can put it right back in and just grow your company more Definitely. brand yourself. <laughs> so with the um I know you sent me a couple of songs one of the ones that stood out to me was the song Chips. Um can you explain those like a little bit about the song like how did you come up with the title uh, as far as the concept of the song like did you hear the beat first or did you already have like a verse written how did that that song all come about I like that joint. Uh pretty much how it came out was um I was you know my uh, at the my my ex manager at the time he was telling me like uh yo you uh you know you got to start making more of these hit, uh, these songs that are hit to the to the year that we in now, and you know I'm more like of a boom bap, you know, soul pain, and yeah, you know I mean tell you my trials and tribulations. So yeah. you know I was like I just got upset and I was mad. So you know I I heard that beat, and then you know my first lyrics, you know that I said is you know they they not they not listening to me. So I, it's like I'm like you know what they not listening. So let me put my my verses on this. And let's see if they hear this, you feel me? And then that's just how it came about. I heard the beat, I started, I was into the melody, and I just started, you know, spitting fast, you know, my flow, and it just, you know, pretty much trying to give people wisdom at the same time, lyricism instead of mumble. That's dope how you were able to do that. Like you said, you just got mad and like you kind of was like not forced to make that type of song, but it came out so good. Like, you know, like a lot of times they like, say if you put an artist in the studio and you say like, yo, we need you to make a, a dance song. We need you to make a radio hit. They may be able to make it, but to us as DJs and producers like that, we can tell that they were forced to do it. Like you could tell that that's what their aim. With this Chip song, it just sound natural. Like I'm surprised you even said like it, it came about that way because it just sound naturally just like it didn't sound like you was trying to make that type of that type of song. It just came out out dope like it came out perfectly like with the beat with the lyrics um everything that you were saying on that song so i think that's you, you definitely got something good going with that aspect of it also man thank you thank you yeah man um you, you know it's all about at the same time too man as, as an artist you have to grow and you have to understand yourself and how your voice sounds on on beats and and pretty much you just gotta find your lane you know and then once you sit there and you 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 learn and 
find out who you really are and then you just you start to understand and then you have to be a person that is open to criticism like you know i'm every time when somebody tells me something as far as hey this doesn't sound good or you need to fix this like i'm always open to ears i never have an ego to to try to make myself feel like i'm better than somebody because at the end of the day we all human and that person's personality or 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 prospect or or you know exactly how they they feel about the situation you know that could help you grow as an artist so you just got to be open to everybody's stuff and then once you take everybody's pieces and puzzles of what they feel in their um their opinions you pretty much just you narrow it all down and then you say you know what well he's right he's not right i don't like this i like this and then you just you build off of it yeah definitely Definitely. One thing, uh, too, I wanted to ask, too. Who, who made the beat for that song, for the Chip song? That is a beat right now that I do not even know, man. I, <laughs> that, beat was, that beat was given to me. I had a hard drive, and that beat was sent to me. Um, years ago, I had gotten, like, a whole bunch of beats, put it on a hard drive because my computer messed up. So yeah. when the, my computer messed up, I wasn't able to, like, you know, rename them or anything like that. So I'm still to this day trying to find that producer. <laughs> and if they do hear it, like, he needs to holler at me. Let me know so I could, you know, personally, you know, buy the whole stems and everything of it. Because I do know that I got the basic lease for that. Oh, okay. So, like, I want the full stems to it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's crazy how, like, sometimes that happens, too. Like, what I know, like, a lot of times producers, they'll send out, like, a beat pack of, like, 20 beats, just like that, then that'll come from somebody else. So it is kind of hard to keep up with those uh, those type of things um, also, especially because I, I used to produce, too. So it's like you send us so much stuff out, it's kind of hard to keep up with who had what or whatever like that, too. But, I mean, you, you killed that joint. Like, that sounded like it was tailor-made for what you was actually spitting in that song. Um, another, one of the, right. another one of the songs that stu- stood out to me also was the, uh, the Beautiful track. How, how did that come about? Oh man, yeah, that beautiful, beautiful track. Uh, pretty much, uh, me being a truck driving man, and my and my girl, she she's always riffing and riffing at me and like, oh, you know, I need you here and stuff. So it's like, you know, at times we go through hardship and all that. So I was just stressed out. I was going through emotions, knowing that I just can't be home at the times when she need me to. Cause yeah. you know, I'm. I'm pretty much gone from Monday to Friday and I just started, you know, spilling my heart and just giving her, you know, trying to express myself to her for her to understand, like, you know, that I'm always going to love her and she's always going to be who, you know, she's always going to be somebody in my heart, you feel me? And hopefully that can, you know, hold her down until I come home. Okay, dope. That's, I mean, a lot of times I tell artists also too, like if you just be honest, like in your music, it has a bigger impact. Like I said, like that, that song right there, you could tell it was just something about it. Like I didn't even know that was the story behind it, but it was just something about that song that actually, uh, that, that like, kind of caught my attention. And I get like a lot of music on a daily. I probably get a hundred emails a day. So for something to really stand out, it really has to have like that, that energy behind it. So I definitely, um, like that joint. Um, with the music, like what's the, what's the ultimate goal with the music? Is it to, um, stay independent, sell music? Is it records? Is it assigned to a label uh, to eventually get your own label? Maybe branch out, do clothing, or what's what's the ultimate goal? What's the end goal for you as an artist where you could just sit back and you could say, like, you know what, I did everything that I wanted to do? All right, so basically the goal of this is that I want I want my, my music to touch people and to probably change people's lives, to take them out of situations that I was either in or I found a way from other people's wisdom you know, to get out of. And what I did was I started, uh, you know, I was already had a contract with a management, that thing went sour. And I just didn't like the whole aspect of, you know, feeling uncomfortable being signed to something that wasn't right. You know, if the contract's right, if everything's cool and people aren't getting screwed over, you know, I'm cool with it. But, you know, in this day and age, it's really not like that. So I just started my own record label and I named it Ash God's Music, which it stands for Always Stay Humble God. Oh, wow. And, uh, and pretty much, you know, uh, we teamed up with my business partner, Dre Day 5 and, you know, we just trying to build and make make it, you know, just for us at the moment to, to grow, to brand ourselves and, and to be something, you know what I'm saying? And just to, to know that, 
you know what I mean? That there is humble, thorough people out there. And, you know, you don't have to be a drug dealer or be on drugs and, and do certain things just to stand out and to be somebody. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's so many different avenues. Yeah, you def, def, definitely right about that. I mean, I could, all I can do is respect it. Like, I definitely uh, respect how y'all going. Even, like, the music that you uh, did send me. I tell artists all the time, a lot of times it's really presentation and how you uh, approach someone. Like, you guys are very professional. And then, like, when you sent me the music, I got, like, the instrumental, the acapella, the clean version, the dirty version. Um, so it, it pretty much have everything there that, that's needed if I'm needed to play the record. A lot of times artists will send music. Like, I had an artist last night send me a song um, that wanted radio play. And he was like, well... It doesn't have too much cursing on it. It's not too explicit. I'm like, yo, you ever heard of like being kind of fired? Like, no, either you fired or you not. Like, if I play this on the radio, you cursing, then I'm fired. Like, it has to be all the way clean. But I like how you guys were professional. You had like the clean version, the regular version, everything like that too, and everything was like titled properly and all that too. You could tell that you guys are really, I mean, taking it serious. It is a serious business, so definitely salute to that also. Oh yeah, man. I mean, it's all it's all through learning learning curves, man, and and you know the the most easiest way that i could make make it easier for the dj and the radios is that that's what's my concern so you know it's all about growing it's all about you know building and and trying to to make an impact you know and bring people along the way to grow and prosper as well you know it's, it's, it's not just a, a me thing it's it's a uh, all of us thing because you know you you what makes the world go around you feel me you do your radio station you do your stuff like you 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 give and receive um information so you make things go around so you know you're very big you know you're very big and people need you you feel me so yeah. you know I, I commend on what you do too so it's all about growing man it's all about growing and making things work so we all here we all human you know there's, there's, there's grind and there's, there's money. It's enough for everybody. <laughs> Definitely. And before we uh, before we wrap this up, before I forget, I just want to say, um, where can they follow you as far as like social media or anything? Either you or management? Is there like a Twitter, uh, Instagram? Where can they follow you if they want to keep up with you? Oh yeah, man. Uh, you could definitely follow at me at jugtheillers dot com. That's uh, J U G T H E I double L E S T dot com. Once you get there, man, that, that'll that take you to everything you need from Spotify to Apple Music to Deezer, Tidal. I'm, I mean, everything's on there. My music videos, everything, every single thing from bio to to, to what, whatever you need to find out about me, that's, that's all where you need to go. Just jugtheellis.com and that will direct you to everything you need. Okay, cool. And if y'all, if y'all listening to this on the, if y'all listening to this on the radio, um, just f- Follow. I mean, definitely go to his uh, website or like that too. But I'll somehow try to tweet the links out and also too. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'll have the links to his website and all that right at the bottom of this video. So if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, the direct link to his website and all that will be at the bottom of the screen and in the links in the description. So y'all can go check him out. Like I said, he got some 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 dope music. So if music catches my ear. Uh, is is definitely something worth worth listening to at least giving it a try. You know what I'm saying, giving your honest opinion about the about the music. Um, was there anything that I that I didn't um that we didn't go over that you wanted to make sure that the people do know about you? Uh, I mean, no, I think we pretty much went over a lot of the stuff. Uh, um, my my YouTube my my YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook is all Jug the Illis. It's all you know, and, and it's so easy to find. So you know, j, j, at J U G T H E I double L E S T for all social media. You know what I mean? You'll be able to find me. Oh, okay, definitely. So yeah, we're gonna link that up. Like I said, I'm gonna do do everything on my end. Like I said, I'm rocking with the music. I'm gonna try to get it out as many on outlets um, as I can. Um, matter of fact, after this interview, I'm gonna play a clip of the actual chip. So if you listen to this interview, just keep listening. After I close up the interview, I'm gonna put like a little clip of the chip song that y'all can check out uh, for the full song. Like I said, you go to his website, follow him, get all the information and stuff for him. Um, so I mean, I appreciate you for calling in. I definitely uh, yeah, salute to you with the music and all that. Like you definitely got some good music. I like the um. That Rude Boy song too. I like that one too. I like that Rude Boy joint too. Oh yeah, yeah, that Rude Boy joint. That, yeah, that's a little hype joint. <laughs> I like it too. Yeah, man. Definitely. Where, where do you do? You have your own studio, or do you go to like a studio record? Because it sounds so professional, like so clear, and like master. It just sounds like mixing everything so well. Uh yeah, no, I pretty well. Well, I pretty much do. I, I used to have my um, like the song chips that uh that I made. I actually recorded and um 
I recorded myself and everything like that when I used to have my own studio. But then, you know, I, eventually I I hit rock bottom at a moment at a time. And, you know, yeah. that pretty much I lost everything. But then I just started writing music into my truck, man. I, all my music that I write, you know, I, I take the time. I try to motivate myself and I write it in in my truck and then when I'm done I'll, I'll go meet up with uh, a, stu- a, a producer or somebody that I know that can mix an engineer um, there is somebody that that's a, a good friend of mine who does mixes my stuff but I do not want to to say the name because I don't know I know he likes to be low key oh, so okay. I don't know if, I don't know if he wants me to blast him so just to be safe I, I won't say it and probably next interview if, I gotta talk to him about that but next interview probably you know what I mean? I'll talk to him to see, and I'll give him a shout out. Because I, I do, I want to give him his, his respect, and and you know what I mean. So that way, other people could, you know, keep an eye on him. But he's, he's yeah, he he's might just a, be one of the people who kind of low key who only want to work with a certain yeah, amount of people like yeah, that too. He's, yeah, yeah, he's, he's just so talented, and it's crazy because the talented people are the most weirdest ways, like yeah. they're introverts and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like it's and it, it, you know it's an amazing thing because that's just how they work, but. Yeah, that's that's how it is, man. <laughs> Definitely. Well, I appreciate you for uh, tuning in. Like I said, if you're watching this on YouTube, links will be in the description, uh, social media and all that. It's DJ Bandana Black, Mr. Well Connected, even more respected, Mr. Hashtag I Am Buffalo. Remember, life is what you make it. So DJ make it. Ban Ban Bandana.